Okay, so it's my pleasure to have this opportunity to give a talk here as a impactful physicist. So, uh, especially for the string conference. Uh, I would like first to <coughs> have a uh, picture here to uh, consider the physics in classified into three parts. So the most important sense of all that our starting point is uh, the experiments, which including like the glider test and also the cosmology uh, observations. And the other part is uh, including uh, like so-called the effective theory, including the standard model uh, so far has been well tested. So I, I put it in red color. And uh, <coughs> some of the possible new physics the updates, in, in, including like the model independent description of the <coughs> by, by just handing no effective operators <coughs> to describe the <coughs> new physics beyond the same model. And we have probably hundreds of the new effective models for new physics, including some of uh, the very popular ones like the minimum system to standard model or the even the lex uh, minimum or lex lex minimum and many other things. And uh, some of those, like the effective series like the MSM and the NMS and so on, could be embedded into a more complete UV theory at higher scales. So we have in the UV sector and the string theory <coughs> nearby the, uh, around the Planck scale and also supergravity and the, the guard is not far away <coughs> around the uh, one or two order magnitude around the Planck, uh, Planck scale. So it's important to see how we can test uh, the, the, the theories and uh, probe the new physics. So one, as you probably already heard, there are already talks in the past few days concerning the direct connection and possible outcome from uh, the UV sector to the, uh, the gliders the test and especially also the cosmological observations. Uh, some of uh, the, the observations in the early universe might also run the same scale of the guard and so on. So that also provides an ideal uh, uh, test. And the part of physicists here, I would uh, take a more conservative way and uh, starting from here with the effective theory and uh, stay as close as possible to the standard model and including some possible new physics and in connection to the experimental test and also in connection try to build possible connections with the UV sector. So I, I would like to start with uh, more on the first part, the experimental side. So why is very exciting for us is starting from about four years ago the OC made a new discovery, so it turns <coughs> to put the high physics on the turning point. So that was, <coughs> that was what we already heard about uh, the, the four years ago, <coughs> 2012, uh, the important discovery of the Higgs particle, which has a mass of the 125 GeV, fairly around the big scale. And the uh, more exciting thing is uh, this year, the OC run 2 is continue to take data and uh, for further <coughs> exploration, and uh, so everyone is waiting for that. So with this, we would expect it <coughs> to, uh, we would expect to that will uh, lead to a new set of the k questions, which will have sharp uh, difference from what happened in 2012, uh, before, and uh, that will lead us to have those k physics questions and for the next gliders to answer and also with possible interface with cosmology and uh, quantum gravity. And let me summarize, <coughs> the, this, the standard model is really is striking, as simple as possible. So the whole Lagrangian in four lines, and it, we see that two of the last two lines are all in connection with the Higgs particle. <coughs> as the case of, for the all the mass generation, including the weak Higgs boson WZ and the lepton quarks, so here we see the Yukawa force, and uh, actually through the, uh, 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 the, 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 the last line, the, the, the kinematic term, the Higgs, uh, Higgs subject, give the mass to the weak gate photons. And uh, in addition, we have the Higgs mass term and also the Higgs surface interactions. So everyone is waiting for is trying to say four years later, is there any new possibilities for new Felix to understand them so I would just simply put these two plots here. That's one happened that we already confirmed. That's the 2012, this 125 GU Higgs discovery. First, we have some evidence around the end of the 2011 <coughs> with two to three sigma evidence with about uh, uh, 
form of this fentanyl by, uh, data. And uh, shortly afterwards, in the uh, 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 spring and summer of the 2012, <coughs> they also made a discovery for these new particles. And uh, after the, the whole round one, at 8 TB one, already collected something like 20 inverse fentanyl bar uh, luminosity <coughs> data for each detector. So we see a clear bump here. And uh, interesting is the last end of last year, everyone already heard about some uh, uh, preliminary <coughs> things about additional possible state of the 750 GeV, and I'm sure uh, everyone already heard a lot of rumors about whether it is this <coughs> going to be disconfirmed or confirmed, uh, because so far, by now, we already each detector have something like uh, 15 immersed spindle bar data. That has been a factor of five, <coughs> more than what we had at the end of the last year. So even though before the next week, the high chip conference, I am sure many people already know some of this. But still, there is more than uh, about half year running in this year, and we were expected to double the data. And that will give us no <coughs> precise and uh, firm indication on any other possible new physics beyond this. So a window to new physics. I would take the most conservative way in this talk <coughs> and say, if we just have this 125 GeV Higgs boson, anything new, we can go beyond that. And I would claim the spin zero Higgs boson is very unique. By itself, it's already an indication of new physics. I will try to provide some evidence. <coughs> Before that, I, I think it's useful to recall the representation of the Lorentz group. So we know that it is isomorphic to the 2SU2, and therefore, the representation has been can be characterized by the content number of the SU2 adverb, just the J, the half integer. And uh, with the two SU2, we have just J and the J prime. And then the different value of the J and the J prime gave us like a periodical table. <coughs> the particles will firmly fit, fit into that, uh, this representation. The very low example is the quarks and the lifetimes or the spin one half fermions fill into the spin representation. And the gate motion fill into its vector representation, one half and one half. And uh, the very striking thing is uh, Lorentz group already pre predicted the simplest Lorentz group representation is the scalar representation, that's zero, zero. That's almost 100 years ago. And finally, <coughs> four years ago, 2012, we found uh, a, a scalar, a, a leading candidate for this scalar representation. And uh, interesting is another, because in particle physics and the cosmology, we also know there are some other uh, required candidates for the sc uh, scalar, like the inflator. So people will stimulate uh, about whether there, uh, there is additional uh, experimental verification of additional particles in the scalar representation, <coughs> and uh, whether there is any connection to the Higgs boson, or the Higgs boson itself could be the inflator. In any case, that's the simplest question we could ask, and uh, you already heard on, uh, on Tuesday, the Nima gave the last talk. <coughs> if we, uh, he pointed out, if we include in the gravity, so that's a spin two, and then we will have this representation up to the uh, spin two, and uh, in between, there is also spin three half particles. So if you take that for granted, some particles should fill into this periodical table, <coughs> something like that, and you would expect the, the gravitino is already a leading candidate. That's a strong indicator for supersymmetry and the supergravity. So that's probably one of the simplest and the most strong thing one would expect to let's take to discover something new, including supersymmetry. So I would uh, classify the possible indication. And the one thing is the mass puzzle. The Higgs boson is supposed to give mass to everyone. But if we look at it, probably the W and the Z mass is most largely generated at the weight scale by a Higgs boson with the vacuum excitation value of the 250 GeV. However, there is also all these fermions, the quarks and the lifetimes and neutrinos with a large mass hierarchy. So with a certain type of the Yukawa interaction sigma tree level, there is a huge hierarchy. Why those uh, uh, couplings uh, with such a particular pattern with a large hierarchy? much smaller than one. So that's one of the puzzles I think is even within standard one can ask. And also uh, the Higgs boson itself, the mass itself, poses puzzle as Nima repeatedly emphasized. 
but it probably is also useful to, to, to point out just strict within the standard model for the ordinary three type of gauge interactions. It is a real level theory, and therefore there is no quadratical divergences which could be observed. It's not observed. So in order to argue from the natural segment to go beyond the standard, you have to assume we have to include something already new, like the gravitation, into the standard model. So that gives you a natural physical cutoff that will cause this lightness problem at the loop level. And uh, also the Higgs surface interaction is completely new. And that's also brought out by the Higgs itself. And then we have the vacuum pattern like the vacuum stability. Just look at the standard model phase potential. We found it is not stable <coughs> uh, up to a certain scale, like 10 to the line of 11 GeV or really far below the Planck mass. And also we have the, the, the vacuum energy pattern, like the people already talked about yesterday. And finally, we, for the inflation, <coughs> there are strong uh, cosmological observations uh, requires inflation. And uh, we would uh, simply like and likely ask whether the Higgs boson could be the inflation or anything else. And in the standard model, we have the kind of thing. Does it work? Why not? How to modify it? And so on. And another important piece of the uh, uh, evidence is the dark matter. People always uh, stress before. And the uh, important thing in collecting the Higgs is the Higgs, uh, Higgs is a dimension one scalar field. So therefore, if you take a look at the Higgs bilinear term, the H sigma H is a dimension 2, which provides a natural Higgs photo to couple to additional new physics, like to the dark matter particle chi pi, or to the graviton through the, the curvature tensor R, and so on. So a lot of exploration along that direction as well. And finally, we have the missing antimatter particle, the bar of symmetry, through so like protocol. Possible realization of the Brown genesis, but unfortunately, in the, within the standard model, electric Brown genesis cannot be realized. It has to go beyond. And also, possibility within the trigger mass generation and the situation in the lifetime sector through the lifetime genesis and so on. So, uh, let me also summarize within the standard model, we have three types of data. Actually, in addition to the three fundamental gate, gate forces, we have two more additional. Uh, new forces induced by the Higgs boson. So this Higgs forces are needed by spin one wave forces. The Yukawa forces and the Higgs surface interaction forces are all mediated by the spin zero Higgs particle we just discovered a few years ago. And uh, this cubic and cortical Higgs uh, uh, self interaction forces concerns the spontaneous center breaking is the key and very crucial to realize that and also generate the Higgs boson mass itself. So the so-called type 2 and the type 3 forces are really two new fundamental forces which they were experimentally explored and, and measured before. Despite as they already ex existed in the standard model for a long, long time. Until recently, this has been putting on a uh, top list for our further uh, ex experimental verification and exploration because the Higgs boson discovered for the first time. And also, it is important to note that with only the scalar, the scalar Higgs boson is very unique because only the spin zero particles can have exact strict surface interaction with itself, like H cube, H force. All the other fundamental particles do not have this property, like the uh, blue ones and the Delvin and Z, so even gravitons. Those are forbidden by their spin and the charge. Let me, with one slide, summarize what's the current status. So the lab territory LC has some good tests for the gate forces, as we already know. And uh, so this actually is a slow mass uh, study <coughs> by Michael Peskin. And uh, we see the LC up to round two with 300 investment of luminosity or the high luminosity or say upgrade by a factor of 10 <coughs> model data. And uh, we see like uh, for the speed couplings can be some relatively well tested, uh, like five to uh, nine percent. However, for the, uh, the fermions, like here I only have two on the list, the, the bottom and the top, 
is somewhat uh, 10 or 10 to 15 percent. So in general, the third family fermions are much harder, and there are some weak sensitivities. Actually, but there is no, and I would say there is no sensitivities to, to all the other eukaryotic families, and hardly probably exception to actins. And therefore, I would say cannot establish the Higgs boson as the guard particle to give masses to everyone. So let me summarize one slide. So the conclusion is the Higgs boson is not only a new particle, but also new forces. And uh, the, the type 2 and type 3, the Yukawa and the Higgs interaction forces are very important, are strongly motivated to quantitatively test them. The conclusion two is uh, any new discovery at the round two certainly will require further uh, precision test, given the unlimited precision at the pattern final, like I'll see, and with the limited energy with only 13 TeV. So they are strongly motivated to go beyond the LC, and they're actually, as you already heard from the previous talk by Nima and Yifan Wang, <coughs> the currently under the central discussion is this high circular gliders, including one design at, in Beijing and another one at the CERN, it's called FCC, CETC, and so on, with the two phases, the electron positron <coughs> in the range of uh, line the GV up to the Z pole, <coughs> up to uh, 250 for the Z H production, and also the TG threshold. And then the second phase, one can, so the first, first phase is the electron positron machine for the precision test of the Higgs phase and can be a release start. And the second phase is the PP collision <coughs> with, in, uh, with the energy, central mass energy <coughs> range from the 50 to 100 TV. <coughs> That's, so in, this is a simple figure showing that because we know the run one, run two is most likely, and the law we already have more than five sigma, also evidence side the run two for the 125 GPX. So it's pretty much standard line, and that makes the precision test to be crucial. And uh, the, the major <coughs> production channel is similar to light, light two, so the late edge production. So there is a peak uh, of the cross section around 240 to 250 GPX. So that's why uh, the, the, the goal for the first, the, the, the phase one. In any case, so it is supposed an uh, indirect precision core, and uh, the uh, one design say, for the CPC, for the two detector, after 10 years of the running, accumulation of the five most other one data, we are expecting to produce one million Higgs as the Higgs factor. So this is already some the CPC direct groups <coughs> simulations gave us the, the very impressive <coughs> uh, precision, like uh, the cross section of the ZH to the half percent, uh, the, the Higgs mass to 5 MeV, the total weight to 2.6 percent, and all the other uh, decay branch infections like the BB to half percent, and the some of the uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the quarks, the power couplings, and then the gauge bosons. Uh, uh, gauge couplings uh, and so on, as around uh, uh, a percent or a few with much higher uh, uh, precision and sensitivity. So, if we uh, characterize all these Higgs uh, couplings in an effective way and use this kappa 1, kappa 2, and uh, like the kappa W, kappa Z for the gauge couplings and the new covers, like the kappa uh, T and kappa B, and so on. So this is a preliminary study on how the CPC can control all those couplings. We see that the gauge couplings is pretty much in, in comparison, like the LC in light blue and the high energy LC in dark blue, and uh, the, the, the uh, different uh, uh, luminosity of the CPC at 250 GeV. The red one is our goal here. So you will see for most of those couplings is fairly around a few percent of some of them in about uh, uh, around one percent, and we have already also sensitivities to to the B you cover coupling, the tau you cover coupling, and the some uh, probe of the mu one and so on. So the model independent describing I will first uh, uh, show is we simply waste in the standard model how to go beyond that, just add all those possible dimension six operators, and that coefficient has new physics in it because it is surprised by the uh, color of lambda square. <coughs> so the lambda is associated with all those effective operators. So if you measure 
the deviation, how to uh, how to probe those effect operators, the effects has to be included into our precision uh, observable. And this is a sample table showing that uh, the Higgs observable and the current electronic precision observable combined is a cup of TeV up to around 10 TeV. If we further including the, uh, the, the CPC study for the Z-pole precision, uh, after all, because all those dimension 6 operators is probed by precision test, there is no, no new state beyond the standard model. So as long as the precision indirect probe is concerned, we found that the, the, the Z-pole constraint are very uh, uh, important. So uh, including that, that the, the, the reach uh, on, on the cutoff scale, the new flex scale can be significantly improved. If one improve, uh, include the complete state of the Z-pole uh, data, we found that the whole thing can be uh, probably further improved by a factor of T up to 20 to 35 TeV. It's pretty much impressive as the precision electron positron machine <coughs> with the indirect probe at the end of the 250 GV. So this is a picture to show that in any case. And for the Higgs surf coupling is much, much harder. And uh, we see the high mass oxygen run is 50 percent and the CPC, if we further include the super indirect, probably reach about 30 percent. But with the SPPC, we can do much better. Because of time constraint, I have. If we further include in, like the derivative coupling, <laughs> the divisible operator of the Higgs dimension 6 operators, one can show that the precision can be further improved, and especially as the uh, SPPC with 100 TeV TP collider, <laughs> down to a few percent, depends to t up to 10 percent, depends on the luminosity. So let me summarize <laughs> constraint by the time. So the CPC produces about a million Higgs photon at 250 TeV, <laughs> and the Higgs gauge you cover cup is most all the gauge couplings and most of, some of the recovery, important recovery couplings can be measured down to one percent, and the Higgs step coupling around something thirty percent. The indirect problem new Higgs scales around ten TeV for the electronic precision of the combined with the Higgs of them, and up to thirty five TeV including the Z-pole data and so on. That's the CPC. The future a certain phase of the hundred TeV measurement could further probe the Higgs couplings up to something like 5 to 10 percent. Uh, let me just use this plot to show, emphasize the, uh, the mass puzzle. If we plot all these uh, uh, particle masses as a circle, the area of the circle, we see only five particles stand out, the W plus minus Z and the Higgs at the top. All the other uh, light fermions <coughs> has the masses close to zero and it's like point light. Plot. So you would see why wondering why is that uh, how this even within the standard model tradable? Uh, what is the new possible new physics responsible for such a tiny power company? And uh, additionally, one can do the unitary analysis like we do for the WW scanning for the W mass generation, which is around the ATEV that motivated LC design energy to be something like 10, 14 TeV to probe the WZ mass generation. And for the fermion, fairly, if we consider the multiple final state, and uh, that gives us a fairly striking uh, uh, range of the uh, upper bound on the scale of the new physics for fermion mass, so like the B quark of the 23 TeV up to, uh, up to 100 TeV for electron, for the, top, for the U and the B quark is something like 70 to 80 TeV, and so on. So it's fairly motivated for this uh, beyond the LC, from the 10 TeV up to 100 TeV scale to really understand the Fermi mass generation. And another thing is concerning with the vacuum stability problem. <laughs> the standard model currently is in a metal stable uh, uh, status. So that indicates the possibility of the including some new physics around the, uh, the, the, the TeV scale that can modify the running of the Higgs self coupling. We have some simple example here. Probably the most complete example is using the supersymmetry to include in additional TeV scale uh, new physics to modify this. Uh, certainly, they also pro provide such, uh, uh, the, 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 the supersymmetry provides such a realization. So the Higgs boson as the inflator, let me uh, 
see why this is interesting. It certainly, if this is, this is true, this provides a direct link flat between the standard model and the learning universe. So I, I wouldn't spend much time and, uh, because I have no more time. And, uh, so this is a picture really for the, uh, the inflation, which tells us the slow row is important because the issue and, 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 and the eta as the first and the second derivative, the, the, uh, the, the, the inflation potential is fairly small for the measurement. And uh, why uh, the, the people originally motivation for the Higgs inflation is if how to make it slow low. If you include an additional uh, the long minimum copy, the R5, R5 square, and therefore uh, going into the Einstein frame, you will see the Higgs potential is suppressed by this factor. Suppose the psi is large enough, and it will be dominated in the denominator by the particle copy, so, so that will make the, uh, for the large phi to be fairly flat. So that is the interesting observation. And uh, that's the typical uh, value for this Higgs inflation is the psi to be around the, the 10,000. And uh, that's the prediction there. So let me just have two minutes to emphasize a different, <coughs> probably more attractive realization of the Higgs inflation is uh, the SUSE provide a natural solution to Higgs instability. Uh, because in the traditional Higgs uh, uh, inflation, within the standard model is impossible. And also the inflation scale is around the SUSE gas inflation. <coughs> the SUSE gas scale, so consider uh, the gas inflation scenario is particularly attractive. <laughs> For the low scale supergravity, it gives us additional uh, uh, advantage, like uh, naturally emerging from the simple stream compactation and provide a, more, <coughs> a lot of the flash reactions that will be useful for the inflation model building. The free base of my model has an explicit example. We take that as an explicit example to make the color Higgs to behave or the triplet double splitting and suppress the 25 volt on the case, and uh, some other interesting uh, properties. So I don't have time, but I would just uh, convince, <coughs> convince you that we have such an explicit realization okay, for everything. So in the end, one can identify the inflaton as a combination of the, uh, of the H2 and HD in the minimum subsumic standard model and uh, make uh, in contact with the, uh, uh, with the cosmological uh, measurement and including also discussion about the behaving and the gravitational production and so on. So let me summarize. <coughs> I have, in my talk, I've emphasized the Higgs boson as the window to the new physics. So all the particle masses and possibly also the inflation of the universe could be originated from the scalar particles of this standard model like Higgs boson. And it has deep connections to supersymmetry, dark matter, CP violation, and baron genesis, and so on. So I would claim probably the 125 GeV Higgs boson is just the tip of the giant iceberg and personally to open a door to New Felix to release the water. I conclude my talk by citing a monumental book, <laughs> Ni Ma Wei, mentioned by Yao and Lattice, published the last winter, <coughs> which uh, tried to explain to, to the world what happens from the Great War to the Great Collider, which the reverse <laughs> suggests. And certainly, the current leading candidate for the site selection is nearby, uh, nearby the end of, the, uh, actually is nearby the starting uh, place of the Elder Great Wall is the Shanghai Pass. That's uh, probably nearby the Qinghuang Dao uh, for the ideal site selection about, five, uh, about 350 kilometers from Beijing the, 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 for the uh, CPC, SPPC tower. And uh, this uh, April, we spent already half a year with me, with my students, to translate this book into Chinese. So all the Chinese people, especially uh, the people outside uh, the Han Netflix society, could well understand what we are trying really to do. And it is, I would say it is an exciting uh, period starting from this year. And uh, we are expecting possible new things from the LC and also working hard 
for the next state. <coughs> so I would wish we all continue to work together and do good works. Thank you. Thank you.